This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, I'm Cameron Harris. We love making this show available to you free of charge, and you can help keep it that way by making a contribution to our Karma Jar or by becoming one of our sponsors. To learn more, visit our website. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. This is episode number 43, and today we're going to be learning about another uh, sandbox tool to work with terrain. This time, it's the stamp tool. Now, in our past episodes, we learned how to model terrain from scratch. Today, we're going to learn how to stamp a flat surface into terrain that has been warped. So that way you can model something like an entire house, or in this case, we're going to be modeling a pad of pavers on top of it on a perfectly flat surface. Let's get started. So the pad that we're going to be making uh, to go on top of our terrain is going to go back in this corner, and it's going to be uh, perfectly flat and made of pavers just like our patio out here. But before we start working on that, there's a little bit of cleanup work we need to do on this terrain that we just finished. And uh, by the way, if you haven't been modeling with us uh, already, and you don't have uh, the terrain and the retaining walls and everything, you can go to our website and download the lesson file for this particular episode, and you can follow along with us from there. Now, we've just got a little bit of cleanup work to do for this terrain, and specifically, you'll notice that the terrain isn't quite the right size. Down over on this end, it's just fine, but over here, you'll notice that the terrain doesn't quite reach to the very end of this um, uh, our retaining wall right here, and you'll also notice if you look at it back here, it doesn't quite make it to the end of our lot, so it's not quite deep enough and it's not quite wide enough. Now you might be wondering why uh, we didn't fix this when we first started modeling our terrain, and that's because, remember, the terrain is made up of a grid, which uh, is invisible now, but these dotted lines show up if you triple click on it, and you can see it's made up of these grids of squares, right? Now what we did was we made our grid uh, so that the spacing of each of the squares was one foot. So it's made up of a grid of one foot squares. Unfortunately, when you're modeling uh, this grid to work with in your terrain, if you, if you tell it to have your grid be one foot spacing, you can only make a grid that is exactly, you know, each length can only be you know, one in one foot chunks. You can't make a one and a half foot uh, wide grid. It has to be one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, whatever. So as such, you can't get this kind of in-between uh, kind of a thing where you can go, you know, whatever this is. This extra space here is about eight inches. We had one foot spacing, so we couldn't do eight inches. But there is something you can do to kind of fix this uh, after the fact, and that's to just kind of grab the edges of your terrain and just kind of stretch it out a little bit. That's the cool thing about terrain, it's very malleable. Uh, so what we're going to do for that is first let's start off with this side piece here. We're going to select this side. Now you notice that this side is made up of all of these different little line segments. I'm going to make it very easy on myself and just really quickly position myself like this and I'm going to drag a marquee over there and I got all those lines. I got a couple extra lines here, so I'll just shift click on those, deselect them. So now I've got this whole side of my terrain selected. I can just use the move tool, go down here, grab this and stretch it out to the side like that. And what that's basically done is if I triple click on it, you notice that this last patch of uh, the grid right here has basically been stretched out, but that's fine. That's, that's perfectly fine. We don't need to worry about that. And I'm going to do the same thing to our back here. So I will go ahead and drag a marquee over here across these guys. And I got a couple of line segments caught in my marquee here. This is a much faster way to go than just, you know, selecting them one at a time, though. There we go. That looks good. And now what I can do is I can do the same thing. Use the move tool and push this forward or back. I'm going to lock it to the uh, green axis so that it can only move backwards or forwards. I'm just going to snap it. We only needed an extra four inches, it looks like, but now that is fitting perfectly. So we just kind of stretched it a little bit to make it fit just fine. 
So now we've got our terrain uh, fitting quite nicely. And now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, start working on our pad here. Now the trick with modeling a pad on top of this kind of warped terrain, I mean, if we were to model a pa pad of pavers on top of, oh, let's say this area over here in the rose garden, it'd be easy because this rose garden is perfectly flat. But the terrain we're working with is not. It has this slope. That's why we modeled it. We wanted that slope. So we want this pad up here to be perfectly flat. But how can we do that? We need to basically manipulate the terrain some more. Well, there's a very, very simple way to do that. And it's part of the sandbox tools, the same tools we used to make this terrain. There's a tool called Stamp, which will essentially stamp a flat surface, a flat shape into our terrain. And the stamp tool actually works very much like a stamp. You need to model something to kind of stamp into this terrain. So to, to have it stamp the correct size and shape of a pad into our terrain, we need to first model a shape for it to use as reference. And so what we're going to do is essentially just model the shape that we want our pad to be. And we're just gonna model it hovering over this terrain. Now what you would expect to do here is model uh, the shape that we're going to stamp into this terrain on top of the terrain. I mean, that's where it's gonna end up, right? Well, that's kind of tricky because you'll notice if we use a rectangle tool on the terrain, it's in practically impossible to get the rectangle tool to function normally because it's not on a flat surface. It's snapping to some very weird places and we're getting some very weird shapes. It's best uh, to not model on top of terrain like this. Instead, it's best to model off to the side. So you can see this is what the rectangle tool should be functioning like. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and make the shape that we want to stamp in, which in this case is going to be nine feet by five feet, just a nine by five rectangle. And I'll go ahead and pull it up, give it some depth. It doesn't matter how deep it is, because that doesn't matter. Just this, uh, this particular shape up here, if you look at it from the top, from the sides, the, the height of it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna go ahead and triple click on it and group it just to make it a little bit easier to handle. And let's go ahead and move it on top of our terrain. Now, this isn't where it's going to go. You can see it's hovering over the terrain. This isn't what we want because it's, you know, we've got all this space underneath here. This is why we need to stamp it and get uh, a flat surface to work with. So, but it's not going to go right up to the edge here. Instead, we're going to move it over six inches this way and six inches this way. So we've got a six inch border on these edges. And I'm going to go ahead and just move it up. So it's hovering over our terrain. And you don't need to give it too much, just an inch or two would be fine, but it's e a little bit easier this way if you can kind of see underneath it nice and easily. So now what we're going to do is you want to make sure that your terrain is ungrouped. Uh, you want to be able to make sure you're in the raw line and face mode here. That's what you want. And uh, make sure that your object that you're stamping onto it, it doesn't have to be grouped, but it's a, it's nice if it is. It's a little bit easier. That way you only have to select one thing instead of a whole bunch of faces. And now what we're going to do is we're going to stamp onto this terrain. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to first click on the shape. Make, make, make sure that the shape is where you want it. And a nice trick is to just kind of position yourself over the shape and just kind of as best you can, and you can see this is essentially where we're going to be stamping. This is the area we're going to be working with. So that looks good. And make sure that you have it selected before you switch to the stamp tools. And now we can go up to the tools menu, and under the sandbox tools, there is stamp. Go ahead and click on stamp. And now, there's a couple things you'll notice that happen. First of all, if we hover our mouse over our terrain, you'll notice that we get this eh, kind of a very small house icon. It's the stamp icon. And so if you were to click on this terrain, it would go ahead and stamp it. But you'll notice we also, over our actual stamp, the shape that we're going to be using as reference for the stamp, we have a little red line. 
Now, what does that little red line mean, that little border around it? That red offset line is very much like um, when you're working with the smooth tool, uh, and the smooth tool has a, a radius of how far it affects it. Uh, in, in other words, what this means is that offset represents how far out the effect of the stamp will go. If this doesn't make any sense, let me show you what I mean. If I were to switch the offset, you notice that over in our uh, dimensions box down there, it says offset one inch. That's what it's set to right now. Let's set it to a foot. And you can see now that our red border has gotten much bigger. If we were to stamp this right now, we would get a nine foot by five foot pad that is perfectly flat right underneath where our stamp is. But instead of just being, you know, flat, 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 flat terrain, we would get a more smooth effect. So it would go from flat and then to the normal terrain over the course of one foot. So let me show you what that would look like. If I stamp this now, you can see that this pad that we're creating, we have the pad, but we also have this kind of weird uh, mound that it's creating. So if we have it set to the offset set to a foot, that mound is one foot wide. That is how far out it is affecting it. If we were to say 10 feet, then this would be affecting a much larger portion. Those, those um, edges there would go out 10 feet instead of one foot. Now if, for example, I'm gonna hit the escape key to kind of undo that, switch back to the stamp tool. In our case, we don't really need that. In some cases, yes, you might need that if you want things to be a little bit more subtle, but in our case, we just want a flat, a flat stamp. So it's default, the smallest it can go by default is just an inch. And we'll go ahead and click. And you can see what happens here. We have this perfect, if I bring this up, you see that this purple flat part here is the exact same size and shape as our stamp, nine foot by five foot rectangle in the exact same position. And we now have, uh, you see, one inch worth of uh, kind of a mound, a slope, uh, going to the rest of our terrain to kind of smooth it out. So now this, we can position anywhere we want. At this point, it's kind of like the push-pull tool, where if we pull it up, we can have this flat part go up, or we can push it down, have it be more like a hole in the ground kind of thing. Uh, or you can just kind of eyeball it. Now, unfortunately, there isn't any way to manually enter in a value. So like you notice our measurements box, it's all grayed out. We can't enter in, oh, offset it six inches or one inch or a foot because there's no starting point to use as reference. So what we need to do instead is just kind of click and drag and just eyeball it to where we want it. And in this case, I'm gonna have ours go up like this, so it's as close to flush with the top of this part as I can. There we go. And now you can see we've got a nice flat pad up here. Now this is what's cool about the stamp tools. Once you've stamped this, we no longer need this shape up here. It served its purpose, so we just use it as a guide. So we can go ahead and delete that. Now, what's a little bit strange about the stamp tool is that you oftentimes will get some very odd looking results, um, depending. Sometimes it'll be perfect, sometimes you'll have weird things like we've got this weird little line segment here. And if you try to delete it, we more weird stuff happens. So if you get weird little lines like this, it's best, and, and you try and delete them and just weird stuff happens, it's best to actually just hide them. Uh, so what we're going to do to hide this guy is switch to the eraser tool. And if we were to just drag the eraser tool over this line, it would delete it and we'd get more weird stuff. If we hold down the option key and drag over this line instead, you can see it holding that down smooths it out. And we've still got some weird things, but that's just because we're starting to play with some pretty complex geometry here. I mean, if, if I triple click on here, you can see that we've not only got this big grid for our terrain, but with the stamp tool, we're getting all these extra line segments and grids that are working to keep this top part flat. So we got all this weird geometry going on, and we're going to be putting pavers over the top of this anyway, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Now, we've got a couple extra lines back here that can be softened up. Uh, these lines here, for example, we may not even need, but 
So you, tr you think you don't need it, you delete it, and because this geometry is so complex, deleting one line will oftentimes remove a big chunk of faces because faces need to be surrounded on all sides, and it gets very complicated. So in this case, it's best to just smooth it out. So we'll just switch to the Erasure tool, hold down the Option key, and just smooth this stuff out. And you can see all those weird lines that we're getting rid of now. There we go. So now it smooths out into the back quite nicely, and we've got a nice pad where we can stick our pavers now. And it looks good from this side too. And you can see if you wanted to get really detailed about it, you could make your radius more than an inch. Uh, if you wanted to go six inches maybe. But th this is nice because it gives you a very sharp slope and it kind of keeps the footprint uh, fairly small. That way you don't have to, you know, all these weird mounds uh, going out for, you know, a foot or two feet in either direction. And now what we're going to do to kind of finish this up is let's go ahead and triple click on our terrain and group it, good. And now we're just going to go ahead and stick some pavers on top of here to finish our pad. So for that, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and double click on the group of our patio. And I'm just gonna copy and we can paste this paver in. Normally, I don't recommend the whole you know copy and paste thing. I usually have you switch to the move tool and then uh, hit the option key to switch the move tool to the copy tool. But in this case, we need to copy something from one group and put it into another group. And you can't really do that with the move tool. You can't move things in and out of groups without having to do some weird exploding the group, regrouping it. It's kind of complex. In this case, it's best to just use the copy and paste function. So we'll go ahead and just stick that paver down there. A pad of pavers on a perfectly flat surface on our terrain. So now you can just walk up this hill, go to this pad here, set up the grill, do whatever you want, and you've got a perfectly flat surface on the otherwise sloped terrain. Well, I hope you found this episode useful. Remember that you can visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com to visit all of our previous episodes. And if you have any questions or comments from me about the show, you can send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. Until next time, guys, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.